Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Saturday, May 6, 2023. Good morning. I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin with last night's go-home edition of WWE SmackDown broadcast live from the Coliseo de Puerto Rico in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The main event saw Rey Mysterio and Zelina Vega of the Latino World Order beat Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley of Judgment Day when Rey pinned Dominic. Judgment Day attacked Rey after the match, but Bad Bunny made the save, leading the rest of the LWO down to the ring. Here comes the LWO, but look who's leading the charge! Bad Bunny is here! He's got his old faithful kendo stick. LWO wiping out the judgment day. The fight spills out the ringside. Damage Control attacked Bianca Belair during an in-ring promo segment earlier in the show with Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan making the save. And like always, the numbers game is just too much valiant effort from Bianca Belair. Damage control is out to cause damage. Bianca Belair down 3 1. But she's got some backup. The women's tag team champions, Lynn Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez. Always spoiling for a fight. Raquel and Morgan going after damage control. In other results, Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Karrion Cross. The Street Profits beat Imperium, and the Good Brothers went over the Viking Raiders. The show marked the first time WWE has presented one of its weekly TV shows in Puerto Rico, and only the second televised WWE event ever held in Puerto Rico after the 2005 edition of New Year's Revolution. In more WWE news, Paul Levesque laid out the tournament plans to crown the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion yesterday at the Backlash press conference in Puerto Rico. But starting after Backlash, this Monday night on Raw, we will begin a World Heavyweight Championship tournament. It will be across both brands. On Monday Night Raw, there will be two triple threat matches with the winners facing each other later that night to determine a winner for Monday Night Raw. That Friday on SmackDown, the same thing will happen. Two triple threat matches will take place. Those winners will face each other at the end of SmackDown to determine a winner there. Those two winners from Raw and SmackDown will then go on to Night of Champions, where one of them will be crowned the new World Heavyweight champion. The press conference also featured an angle which included Damian Priest and Bad Bunny in which the two got physical and had to be separated by Levesque. Priest and Bunny are scheduled to meet in the ring tonight at Backlash. AEW presented a taped edition of Rampage yesterday on TNT featuring matches recorded last Wednesday at the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore. The show was headlined by The Firm Deletion, a cinematic match staged at the Hardy Compound in which the Hardy Boys Hook and Isaiah Cassidy defeated The Firm when Matt Hardy pinned Ethan Page. It's a shame, under different circumstances, we could have been great friends. Delete! Goodbye, Ego! Ethan Page getting battered by everyone, and now Jeff Hardy ascends to the top one. John Bomb, Matt Hardy covers two, three, and the yeah! firm has been deleted. Earlier in the show, TBS champion Jade Cargill took her undefeated streak to 57 and 0 with a quick win over Gia Scott. In other results, Mark Briscoe pinned Preston Vance and the Lucha Brothers and Iho Del Vikingo defeated QTV in the opener. In WrestleMania news, it was revealed yesterday by Burke Nehill, president and CEO of the Tennessee Titans football team, that WWE has committed to bringing WrestleMania 43 to Nashville's Titans Stadium in 2027. Nehill made the comments during an appearance on FM station 104.5 The Zone. 
This would be the first time WrestleMania has come to the state of Tennessee. Titan Stadium is expected to open in 2026. Turning to Japan, Dragon Gate ran the Aichi Perfectual Gymnasium for their Dead or Alive 2023 show yesterday, which featured four title tilts. In the main event, Madoka Kakuda upended Shun Skywalker in 23 minutes and 16 seconds to win the company's top title, the Open the Dream Gate Championship. Kakuda pinned Skywalker after delivering a rolling lariat. It was the only title to change hands on Friday, as Jason Lee retained the Open the Brave Gate title, defeating Dragon Dia. Keno and Shuji Kondo topped Kai and Ishin to retain the Open the Twin Gate tag team title, and Kota Minora, BB Hulk, and Ben K held on to the Open the Triangle Gate trios title, defeating Kizi, Big Boss Shimizu, and Strong Machine J. And in news from outside the ring, the death of former WWE Tough Enough winner Sarah Lee has been ruled a suicide, according to a report from TMZ Sports. The Bexar County Medical Examiner reportedly released an autopsy report indicating Lee had ingested a lethal dose of pills and alcohol on October 6, 2022, and it was revealed that a suicide letter was found at the scene of her death. Lee also was found with bruises and abrasions on her head and body with a report indicating that she may have sustained the injuries in a fall while in her intoxicated condition. Lee was the 2015 winner of Tough Enough, earning a one-year $250,000 contract. She was released by WWE after the contract expired in September 2016. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The wrestling news is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the wrestling newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.